Eddie, what you doing, baby? I'm having a drink right now. Began the call from my husband, Mark. He was clearly tipsy and was pouring his heart out to some woman I didn't know. I was under the impression he was on a business trip for the week, but looks like that wasn't the whole truth. I love you, Addie Bear. Nighty-night. Well, good night, and goodbye for good, and then hung up on him. He's got some nerve. He's going to wish he never crossed me. I'm Ellen, and I just hit the big 3-0. I tied the knot about four years back, and I'm currently working a desk job. Our little family is made up of Mark, our adorable three-year-old Emma, and yours truly, all cozy, in our apartment. Mark and I first crossed paths at a group hangout set up by mutual friends. It was my first time at something like that, and to be honest, I was kind of freaking out. But lucky for me, Mark was seated right next to me and picking up on my jitters, took the initiative to chat. Ellen, you seem a bit on edge. New to these kind of gatherings? Just a heads up, if you're not into drinking, don't feel pressured. He suggested. I mean, I don't love alcohol, but I don't mind it. Thanks for being so considerate. He laughed, adding, Just remember, these things are meant to be fun, not a pressure cooker. In that moment, I was really digging his considerate vibe. We hit it off that night, swapped numbers, and the rest, as they say, is history. Fast forward a bit, he popped the question, and we had our dream wedding, and a year later, little Emma came into the picture. To anyone looking in, our life probably seemed picture perfect. But as I was finding out, sharing a life with Mark wasn't always a walk in the park. We were both hustling in the workforce. While I was grinding at a typical company, Mark was with a business that specialized in family-friendly recreational spots. This meant he was often on the road. So when we decided to say, I do, we also decided I'd take on the lion's share of the house stuff. He was all apologetic, saying, I hate that this is falling on you. Whenever I'm in town and free, I'll do my best to help out. It's all good. You're traveling for work, so I've got things covered here. Initially, he held up his end of the bargain. But when he actually gave house chores a shot, a bunch of problems popped up. Mark, these groceries are kinda old. I told you to grab fresh stuff, even if it costs a bit more. But it was 50 cents cheaper. I thought, why not save a bit? They're not that bad. That's not really the issue. In the tub you cleaned, it's got mold all over. If you're not gonna scrub it down right, I just end up doing it over. You're being picky. It looks clean enough, right? A little mold isn't gonna hurt anyone. At the heart of our disagreements was his lackluster approach to keeping the house up. Whether it was him going for the cheapest groceries, giving the tub a half-hearted scrub, or just tossing clothes around, his casual approach to home upkeep was wearing thin. The one's charming laid-back attitude was turning into a hassle. Splurging on pricey things just isn't his style. He's kind of lax when it comes to chores, figuring a bit of clutter is no big deal. Honestly, it'd probably be smoother if I just tackled it from the get-go. But I've got my own job, so handling all the housework isn't really doable. If we keep going down this road, our place could turn into a disaster if I ever catch a bug. I've walked him through the ropes of home chores more times than I can count. We've butted heads here and there, but I've always stood my ground and never let him off the hook. Over time, he started shaping up, not necessarily out of self-improvement, but more so to avoid my lengthy talks on proper cleaning. Regardless of the reason, I was happy he was stepping up, but as our first anniversary loomed, I noticed he started slipping, ditching even the smallest tasks. Hey, it was your turn to deal with the trash, and who ended up doing the dishes? Me! It feels like I'm running this whole show solo. Oh, I'm so sorry. It slipped my mind. Work's just been nuts. I'll step up next time. But his string of empty promises was seriously getting old. But there was more to it. After our daughter was born, Mark just seemed to coast. Emma, you're a gem. Definitely got my good looks. Bet you're gonna be a stunner when you grow up. Keep aiming for the stars. 
It's sweet how much you love her, but could you maybe give her a bath now and then? I've got other stuff to handle. Uh, no. After a long day, you want me to skip my relaxing bath? Isn't it kind of your job to look after her? Just get to the chores after her bath. It just makes everything drag on. Between taking care of her and the house, I'm up super late. And that's not even touching on her wake-up calls at night. Yeah, he's head over heels for her, but he won't change a diaper or give her a bath. He keeps saying it's the mom's job and dumps it all on me. Talk about being old-fashioned. He should pitch in. She's his kid, too. We're both working here, and I'm not living off just his paycheck. Still, he'd always dodge the dad duties. As Emma got older, he started spoiling her rotten, buying anything she pointed at. I'd tell him to dial it back, but he'd just brush me off. We started butting heads more about how to raise her. Wait a minute, did you give Emma candy again? I told you she shouldn't eat before dinner. What if she skips her meal now? She gave me those puppy dog eyes wanting the candy. How could I say no? She was hungry and maybe she's into candy because your cooking isn't her favorite. It's not about that. You're overindulging her. Just the other day, you got her that toy she was fussing over. We need to set some limits. Lay off. What's the big deal if I use my cash to get my daughter some toys? You're way out of the line for making a fuss. Honestly, I feel bad for Emma having you as a mom. He huffed. But it wasn't just about the toys and treats. Whenever I'd correct her for acting out, he'd swoop in and soothe her, going, Mom's a bit much, right? He never wanted to be the bad guy, so he'd never reprimand her, even if she was up to no good or getting into risky situations. It's not like I get a kick out of disciplining her. This back and forth over parenting Emma led to more and more spats. We tried to hash things out after each disagreement, but we just couldn't see eye to eye. By the time she hit her third birthday, things between us were frosty at best. We put on a united front for her, but when she wasn't around, we hardly exchanged words. We couldn't keep going like this. It's not healthy for a kid to grow up in a tense household. Maybe I need to ease up on Mark. With that in mind, I did try to connect with him, but every attempt was met with quit the nagging or not now. He'd even snap at me saying, I can't even recognize you anymore. All you do is complain and you let yourself go. Remember how gorgeous you were when we got hitched? Now it's like pulling teeth, just chatting with you. I couldn't take it after that and just stopped reaching out. I felt like our relationship was a lost cause, and I resolved to end things once Emma was a bit older and more independent. On top of that, Mark was acting kind of off. His work trips were stacking up. He always traveled for work, but it was non-stop now. He'd get back, and within a couple of days, he'd be off again. That became the new routine. He started rolling into the house really late and would sometimes crash at the office. In the past, disagreements or not, he'd always let me know if he'd be out overnight or if there was a work trip coming up. Now, there were nights he'd just no-show, leaving the dinner I made untouched. If I asked him to at least shoot me a text or something, he'd brush me off saying, Don't meddle in my work stuff. There were other red flags too. Mark, who used to be super chill and not really into fashion, suddenly started splurging on high-end clothes and grooming more. He was also really attached to his phone, taking it everywhere, even to the restroom. If it buzzed during dinner, he'd bolt to his room or the bathroom to take the call. He'd always say it was some confidential work call, but it was getting excessive. All these changes had my radar up. And then, there was this week-long business trip on the horizon. Oddly enough, he seemed pretty psyched about it. Six days after my husband jetted off for his business trip, I was settling in for the night after tucking Emma in when out of the blue my phone buzzed from him. That was odd. Since things got rocky between us, we'd kept our chats to just the essentials. I answered, feeling a bit uneasy. He greeted me with a peppy, Hey, you. It was obvious he had been drinking. And then he let something slip. Addy, what you doing, baby? I'm having a drink right now. How's your cold, baby? I was hoping we could have traveled together this time. 
Too bad. Next trip, I'll just tell my wife it's for work and we can sneak away. He was clearly mistaking me for another woman and poured out all these affectionate words. You're such a mix of sexy and sweet, Addie. Young, great body, and so caring. My wife, nothing but nagging, totally lost her spark. And those little wrinkles by her eyes? Yikes. As he rambled on, comparing this Hattie to me, I just stayed silent on the other end. Seeming satisfied after his little vent session, he wrapped up with, Honestly, I wish we could just end the marriage so I can be with you, Addie. It's getting late. Gotta go. I love you, Addie Bear. Nighty night. I calmly replied, Well, good night, and goodbye for good. Message received loud and clear. I heard his confused, What? But I didn't bother responding. Instead, I blocked his number, fuming and ready to confront him. He's got some nerve. He's going to wish he never crossed me. The next morning, I was chilling on the couch when Mark burst in, looking all frazzled. He could barely string a sentence together, managing a... About last night. I mean... I cut him off, pushing divorce papers towards him. Never expected you to spill your secrets during a late night call. I was more surprised than angry. How on earth do you mix up your wife with your side piece? No, wait. That call wasn't what it sounded like. Just hear me out. You're talking about love and splitting up and you say there's a misunderstanding? This is happening. We're divorcing. And since you stepped out, you'll be footing the bill. No way. I was just running my mouth because I had too much to drink. I didn't cheat. We're not ending things. You got no evidence, right? Rolling my eyes, I pulled out some pictures and spread them out for him to see. His face lost all color as he looked at the snaps of him cozying up with another woman. It was undeniable proof of his cheating. No way. What's up with these photos? I've been on to your little secret for some time. I even checked with your office about those so-called business trips and found out you were taking personal time off. I was stunned to discover that he wasn't actually traveling for work as much as he claimed. So I got a private investigator on the case to dig up solid proof of his sneaky ways. He clearly didn't see it coming because he didn't bother covering his tracks. The detective didn't take long to find evidence. Turns out he's been seeing a woman from one of his company's clients. I guess things took off between them right around when our relationship hit rock bottom. Just so you know, I tipped off your company about your antics, and I'm gonna be seeking damages from her too. It's gonna get ugly, so strap in. He looked like he'd seen a ghost and was shaking in his boots. Then, out of nowhere, he dropped to his knees, begging. Helen, please rethink the divorce. Hattie meant nothing. You're my number one. I swear I won't stray again. Hold up. After telling me I lost my looks and it was icy cold, you want to just sweep it under the rug? How do you expect me to stay after hearing all that? I had too much to drink. I wasn't thinking straight. And what about Emma? Isn't it rough making her live through our split? I couldn't believe he had the nerve to pull the dad card. You've got some nerve bringing her up. Do you honestly think it's better for her to have a dad who cheats and lies without missing a beat? I, uh... Save it. We're getting divorced. I'm taking Emma. And you? Your job is to keep up with the child support. And trust me, you don't want to find out what happens if you slack off. He looked crushed. Fast forward a bit and we did end up getting divorced. I got money out of both Mark and Addie and made sure he'd be paying child support. He tried his best to get custody, but his cheating ways and lack of time spent with Emma made the decision pretty easy for me. Addie's folks settled her part in full, and she got shipped back to her parents' place, probably even lost her job over it. Mark's folks, solid people, actually were super apologetic about the whole thing. They filled me in on how they're keeping a close eye on him, even threatening to cut him off if he doesn't keep up with child support. His work shifted him to another department after the scandal broke out. Word on the street is he's a shadow of his former self, and honestly, he had it coming. 
As for me, I moved back in with my parents and have been hustling every day. The highlight is watching Emma blossom.